first and oldest public school system of the nation offered no, absolutely no opportunities to learn about Africa. In an 800 page plus text, there was one paragraph about AXA, one for Kilwa, one for the contributions of Ghana, Mali, Matsamusa, and Sangay. <laughs> What's wrong with being African? And plus, we're all African. Um, the only time that I was exposed to the continent of Africa was in seventh grade when we learned about Egypt. I didn't learn I was African until I was an adult in college. I was a 10th grader, and one of the electives offered was black history. I was called to the guidance office to be informed that the class was canceled because I was the only person who signed up for the class. I was like, what? Like five people in your community that weren't white? So I pulled out my high school yearbook and they were just like, oh my gosh. I actually had teachers told me all the, the only thing they need to know about Africa is gold and salt. Um, and I knew that that could not be right. I learned about Kwanzaa in 1975. Of course, that was the time of black pride, Afro dashikis, red, black, green, postal rights, and loving thyself. My Afro? instead of the typical poem, the use of my Yoruba name, Ade, in place of Margaret. Last summer I traveled to Rwanda um, with a group of educators and Carl Wilkins. He was the only um, American to stay behind during the Rwandan genocide. Mm -hmm. And um, it was life changing. Tea infused with spices, sweet and milky, Ethiopia, the gift of coffee. Our school has been fortunate to have an influx of students from Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, and more. Several of these students have become my favorite people. It's time for me and my community to go back to Africa. In Ethiopia and elsewhere in Africa, the unfortunate thing is we know more about other places than about us. Menelik I became the first king of Ethiopia. He acquired the Ark containing the tablets of the Ten Commandments and brought it to Aksum. The Ark of the Covenant was then brought to this church. The Aksum is also a Christian holy site. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church continues to follow early Christian teachings, practices and traditions. Um, that King Facilitus. One day in the year 1889, Emperor Johannes IV, desperately trying to preserve the integrity of his empire. And at his side, Empress Ketu, Queen of Queens, now the most powerful woman in the land. The naive flues, while they are away on their blind pilgrimages, we shall gather the land and its resources onto us. <laughs> what can be so urgent that you dare to enter the royal palace with shoes? I say no more. We must fight back. My friends, I shall soon return to you with this so-called King of Kings locked up in a cage. The Empress grip on national politics weakened. Nonetheless, she lived her final years with great dignity and her name lives on today. The leading role that Empress Taitu had in this, uh, in this fight, in this war, in this battle is, is mind-blowing to me to discover. Creativity, vision. Courage, ability to do these things. The larger, the larger picture, larger, the larger ways of looking at the world for this. There's more than this or in a consciousness. Ethiopia is mentioned in various places in the Bible. Ethiopia was significant because it was a home of Christianity without being funneled through European or Western Christianity. So they could say. This is something that we can identify with. There were fights going on between African Americans and Italian Americans. The Italian army ruthlessly attacks Ethiopia. Why uh, Gondor as the place of 
conflict in Ethiopia. What? So you have these buckets, buckets. This is interesting right here because here you have nowhere in any Western democracy do you have an indigenous Muslim community that has been in the U.S. since its inception. We're no longer connected back to the Islam of West Africa or East Africa. For any people, the cattle people, for the milk is great. Kwasam ena moji. Kwasam ena moji. Is is ena. Moji is good. Come eat. That's a very classical term when you are young, always come, come eat. Ar nyam. Ar nyam. Yero Mahmoud lived in Washington DC area in the 1700s. He was one of the first freed slaves to open or co-open a bank. He lived in Georgetown. was formed in the whole conflict between Sama Uru and Sama Nguru and Sundi Ada revolved around the issue of slavery and the slave trade. Because we have this, this joking relationship between these lineages, in, in, in English they just call it joking relationship, in French they call it the cosinage, in uh, Mandinka it's called the sign of coup. The hunters declare all human life is one life. It is true that one life may appear to exist before another life, but one life is not more ancient or more respectable than another life. What is this story saying about who Malians are? What would your students be likely to say? Uh, Sam Moritz in Switzerland is named after him. Uh, he was an African saint and he had the Cathedral of the Holy Roman Empire is in his name, his relics are there. Europeans in the Middle Ages used to crawl on their knees to the front of the cathedral to worship at the feet of an African saint. You can also see how you can modify it. It doesn't have to be made out of this fancy material, but you can modify this. A son of the ruler of the Islamic theocracy of Utah, Jalal. The people from Timbuk that founded Timbuktu, my ancestors, were not descendants of Timbuktu Mali. Why or how did the notion of Timbuktu enter into the mindsets of these people? And why did they choose this name to name their communities? Black people founding their own community chose to name it Timbuktu after the great Timbuktu. So most of the settlements were actually in the southern part of the state, but their underground real stopped toward the north as well. But Mr. Henry was a photographer, he was an ar archaeologist, he was an artist, so he could sketch whatever he could see. So he managed to set from Tripoli to Timbuktu. After seven years, he, he reached Timbuktu. And, you know, but he reached Timbuktu, he disguised himself as a Turkish explorer. Mali is a very important country. Uh, to all of us, and, and I think this, you know, presentation 
prior presentation actually highlights the importance of Mali in contemporary affairs. Seeing Africa as one thing, when you see Africa, people think, oh, well, it's mostly black people. They don't think about the diversity of race, the diversity of culture, the diversity of languages. It's usually one thing in mind. We talk about, you know, think about sub Saharan Africa. It's just black people, right? They just black. So to see some little different, it arouses curiosity. Well, you can't be African because you don't look like this. This is how, in my imagination, this is how an African is supposed to look. The, the Maghreb country do not feel the same as the Tuareg yeah. feel about themselves. They tell, they say, well, the Tuareg, you guys are from the land of the Bilal, which means black people. <laughs> available to the mission, you know, and that's, that's all I can do. The reason Christianity is significant in the Kingdom of Congo is because it's non-colonial Christianity. The Kingdom of Congo was not a Portuguese colony. I have to keep saying this to people. Even in Angola, people actually believe when the Portuguese showed up, bingo, everybody became a colony. Just to, by uh, José the First, you see his territory over there. What do you call it? Artistic work is a product really of the 18th and 19th century. It's this idea of combining an African deity with a Catholic saint. The Portuguese governor claimed at that time they are astounded that this person who have not been educated could keep up and argue in such a persuasive way. She was to send an ambassador directly to the Vatican. She writes a letter to the, the Capuchin saying, please, I'm going to send him. I'm going to have slaves so that you could sell to get him clothes, dressed as an official representative of me, get him through Luanda, go to Portugal, do as if I really send my condolences to the Queen of Portugal, but get him to Vatican so that he can be my voice. And if you can't get him there, then you take represent me there. Your stereotype about oil and war, and Angola has had far more of its share of war than many other countries, being almost continuously at war from 1961 to 2002. The circle, you make a turn in the circle. Sometimes when Capoeira, when Capoeiristas are playing and they want to break in the game, you'll see them walk the circle. This turn, this twist, right? And this is birth. It doesn't matter what it is. As an African, we will sing our troubles, dance our troubles, sing our joys, and dance our joys. 
Kizomba is a dance of connection. That's how you pick that person that you trust. Watch the distance. Watch the distance. Friends are still watching. So. that it was best for me to take a class to help me get familiar with the culture. Um, when I signed up for this class, I have been amazed. I'm learning how to connect, I'm learning how to voice, and I'm learning how to see. If you are in America, no seriously, you've got to take this course. It's phenomenal. So I thank you, Dr. Randolph and others for organizing this phenomenal, phenomenal conference. It's been a multi-sensory experience, the food, the music, the culture, and actually hearing the voices and the visions of African people has been amazing. We're learning about three countries in Africa, uh, many academic lectures. I'm so glad to be here. It was really refreshing to take away several lesson plan ideas that I plan to implement this year because of this institute. Uh, this has really piqued my interest in learning more about Africa. I am keeping a list of some practical things that I can take back to my school. The depth of knowledge of our presenters is just overwhelming. And I have really, truly enjoyed this um, three-day workshop. You come into this and you think you have a great foundation and then there's so much more. Well, I'm excited to empower the students and to give them something else to help them understand that our story began so much further back. Over the series of these past three days, I am really excited about taking this new information and these new resources back to my students and back to the community. It's great to hear, hear talks, but it's also great to come away with tools. We as educators uh, got to see a model of what, you know, what at least I hope to do when I teach and when I'm in the classroom.